Let's take question number 16. Now, in this question, a block of mass 10 kg is kept on a rough inclined plane as shown in the figure. A force of 3 Newton is applied on the block and it is acting downwards. The coefficient of static friction between the plane and the block is 0.6. What should be the minimum value of force P such that the block does not move downward? Now, first of all, we have to see what are the forces acting on the block. This question belongs to mechanics section. So let's first of all draw all the forces possible. So mg will be acting downwards, right? And let's take from here to here a normal. Now in this question, this is mg, this is 45 degrees. So certainly this is also 45 degree. So on resolving this mg downwards, I'll get mg cos 45, that is mg by root 2. And here will be mg sin 45. Again, I'll write mg by root 2, right? And this block is having a tendency to move downward and I have to stop it by doing so. So the friction will have a tendency to act upwards. So all in all, along this direction, the forces of downward nature and forces of this upward nature should add and balance each other. That means the sum of these two should be equal to sum of these two, right? Now let's start with the solution of same. First of all, friction would be equal to mu into n that is equals to mu mg cos of 45 degree. As you can see in the diagram, normal reaction will be acting upwards and that is equals to mg cos 45 or mg by root 2. So from here, you will get 0 0.6. The mass of block is 10 into 10 into 1 by root 2. So it would be 60 by root 2 or 30 root 2 Newton. So we have force of friction with us. This is the first case. Secondly, I said that force acting downwards that is sum of mg by root 2 plus 3 should be equal to P plus F. So this mg would be 10 into 10 by root 2 plus 3 would be equal to P plus 30 root 2 Newton. So P would be 50 root 2 plus 3 minus 30 root 2. Solving this, you will get 20 root 2 plus 3 Newton. So this would be nearly equal to 32 Newton. Let's see which is the best suited option here. So as the options are available, option number 2 would be the best suited option. Right? Let's move ahead for our next question. Now in this question, if the angular momentum of a planet of mass m moving around the sun in a circular orbit is L about the center of the sun, its area's velocity is. What we require is an aerial velocity and it's very easy with the approach towards angular momentum. First of all, the angular momentum is given as mvr. As we all are aware, for any circular motion, the angular momentum would be equal to mvr. Now from here, I can say v is equals to l by mr. Now in a circular motion, time interval or time period would be equal to distance that is 2 pi r divided by speed, right? From here, if you say it would be 2 pi r divided by l, this one, and m and r will go upwards, right? So this is the time period. So from here, the aerial velocity would be equal to the area covered divided by the time taken. Let's consider this as v dash. So this v dash would be equal to pi r square by time taken, that is area covered by time. Let's consider this as v dash. So now let's put down the values of t. v dash would be equal to pi r square, the whole divided by what is the time, 2 pi r square, this m will come here and l will go up. You will see the final answer as l by 2 m. This is the final aerial velocity which is required. Let's see which are the best suited options. As you can see, answer number 3 is the best option for this question. Hope this was clear to you. Let's move forward to our next question number 18. Now this question belongs to mechanics, basically kinematic section. 
a particle is moving with a velocity of v is equals to k y i cap plus x j cap where k is a constant. The general equation for its path has to be found here. Let's start with the solution. So first of all, concentrating on the equation of velocity, it can be written as k y i cap plus k x j cap. That means velocity along x axis is dependent on y and velocity on y axis is dependent on x coordinate. So shall I write it like this, v x would be equal to k y. Similarly, v y is equal to k x, right? Now this v x can be written as d x by d t that would be equal to ky and this vy can be written as dy by dt which will be written as kx. Let's consider this as equation 1 and this as equation 2. What I may get is dividing equation 2 with equation 1, I will get dy by dx as x by y. Now just cross multiply these values, what you will get from here is y dy is equals to x dx and integral. Since there are no limits, then we have to put a constant there. This integration will be y square by 2. This will be equal to x square by 2 plus a constant, right? Solving this, you will get the equation as y square equals to x square plus a new constant. Let's take it as constant dash. So what is the relation here? y square equals to x square plus a constant. Let's see which is the best suited option. So first does not satisfy, second does not satisfy. Yes, the third equation is the right answer to this question. Hope it was clear to you. Let's move on to the next section of question number 19.